cashing is and some of the pitfalls people think oh i must have cashing they chuck a load of things together perhaps it doesn't work as well as it should and there are problems with that um and explain what cashing is if you don't know what 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 and what it what what it means um next look at your hosting how can you get the most out of your hosting services get the best out of that and finally hippo help what what we can do to help you um uh squeeze out that performance about that of, of every web page that you're, you're you're sending to your visitors okay so the first Jason, thing that's had a, a comment from jasvir just a, just a comment not a question it says she says she loves the hippos oh, absolutely good. loving the hippos <laughs> my Thank daughter you, designed the, my, my daughter designed the logo it's a story i sort of i think it's on my website as well but but it was uh she designed the logo she came up with the name and uh, she's 15 and i thought well you can't really go against your daughter i was thinking of a name for the business and there you go. That's it. That's 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 how it got its name and the logo. Yeah, good to have you listening with us, Jasper. And yeah, thanks for your comment. Yeah, very lovely cheeky smiles on them. But yeah. uh, Jason, carry on. I didn't want to interrupt, but I thought it's just worth, no, no. worth comment on. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so basically, the website comes down to this simple rule: the more things you have on the page, the longer it takes to load. That's that's the most basic basic thing there. So that, that's there. And. Um, the things, the things I sort of mean, the things I'm talking about are just things, images, videos, animations, fonts, the amount of text, anything like that will slow down your website. So it's a case of being efficient with what you put on the web page. Okay. But how do you know it's, it's, it's your website is slow. Now you can keep looking at your website. You can get your watch. You can time it. You can think, Oh, it's going to take, it's take one, two, three. Oh, I can see a page, but looking at your own website, isn't really a very accurate picture of how it works because you probably look at your website quite often. You probably go two or three times a day, maybe, or look at more than that. I, I'm always looking at mine. But um, when you look at your website, your computer will save a copy of that page. It will put a copy of that page on the computer. So next time you look at it, it will load more quickly. So you're not getting a true picture of where the problems lie. You're seeing a very, very quick loading page, but actually for a new visitor, it might be taking a lot longer. And the tool I like to use, um, it's called GT Metrics. Um, and GT Metrics is, um, uh, there's, there's a number of ones, there's, there's Google Page Insights. I don't like that. I find it can be a bit unfriendly. Some of the comments, you think, oh, that's, that's a bit rude what it's saying about my website. And I don't know, I'm not that, that happy in it all. I'm not really sure what it means there. And it doesn't give necessarily the information. The one I like to use is GT Metrics. It's, it's simple, but it also you can drill down and get more information about why your website is slow. And so I'm just going to take you through an example of a, a, a client I was working with a few weeks ago, looking at how to optimize the website. They wanted to move the hosting to, to HippoSurf and, uh, and then in doing so, they wanted to optimize and look at how they could make things faster with their website. And so I did, I ran their site through GT Metrics. The good thing, the nice thing about GT Metrics, it's free. Um, and also if you create an account, which again is free, um, it keeps a history. Of, of what you've looked at in the past. So you could look at your website, say, five days ago, make some changes, look at it again, and then you can compare how it's improved. And so you can see where things, changes have, have happened and, and you know, say, yeah, that's, that's worked. And then you can keep doing that and, and improving the speed of your website. So when I ran this client's website, the first time I looked at it, it had a page speed score of F, which is the lowest. It's not nice, F, 41%. Um, the Y slow score, it's a bit trickier to deal with it, but it's higher, but it's harder for that to change. It's more technical to get that to that, that speed up. And, uh, but the page speed score, speed score is the important one. If you look at the um, total page size, 28.6 megabytes, now that's quite high. That's a lot. Um, if you think of the old days of the floppy disks that were one megabyte each, it's 20 of those. It's a pile about that high of floppy disks having to load. Now, okay, with broadband, it might not be that bad. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so these are, um, so this, this. Well, uh, I threw you off then, <laughs> No, 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 absolutely. I'm thinking of, yeah, my school days are even bigger than they were these really yeah. floppy things. Um, yeah. So that's a lot to load. And, if someone's using perhaps a mobile phone where they might not have they might have a slow connection or a, a bad signal that will take even longer to load and you can see the fully loaded page time for that page to load from start to finish is 18.7 seconds now that figure 18.7 seconds isn't necessarily the whole story um, you know, it's not like they'll see a blank screen for 18.7 seconds and nothing will load 
but there is another score. And if we click, when you're in um, GT Metrics, if you click on the timings tab, you'll get this window up here. And this window tells you how long it takes before you get this thing called a contentful paint. And that's the important figure. So it's at the moment, it's taking 9.1 seconds before the user sees anything on their screen of any use. Um, Just a couple of questions, Jason. I don't want to interrupt you, but you want questions as you go along, but... Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah, so um, I, you may well be going to cover this, but um, uh, Claire was just asking you, talking about things that might slow down. Are you going to cover things, anything that might speed up the website as well? Yeah. Uh, you may well be going to that, so just feed, feed that in to you. Yeah. Uh, and um, Jasper is just asking again, so you've mentioned, you mentioned all the 18 seconds and now the nine seconds. Would anybody see anything during that time or would it just be a blank page? What so, do they see during those first nine seconds or 18 seconds? The nine seconds is the contentful paint. And that's basically, a contentful paint is the time taken before the user sees something useful. So they'll have, they're waiting 9.1 seconds before something appears on the screen that's useful to them. There might be a few bits and pieces loading, a few colours loading, but no text is appearing, no images are appearing for 9.1 seconds. And nine seconds, if you count nine seconds, one, two, three, four, five you're going somewhere else is that website even working after that that amount of time so that you're is like the what, old egg time and the floppy disk eh? yeah yeah <laughs> and going back to that thing at the start 50 percent of people will leave if the page hasn't loaded within three to five seconds so 9.1 seconds is too long so to find out what is slowing the website down how we could what's there is, is click on the waterfall tab here and that'll give you some information. It drills down and what this, you get a huge long list of everything that's loaded on your web page. And then here you have how long it takes in the timeline, how long it takes for that, that item to load. And you could, if you remember, it was 28 megabytes was being downloaded. There are two images here that account for nearly 26 of those megabytes, just two images on the page. So most of that page is waiting for these two images to load. Ooh. And this one here, this image here, was the header of the page. It was the very first image on the page. It was in the header. So it was taking 10 seconds to load that image. So that, that, that was the main, the main image on the page. It was taking that length of time. And so these two images were basically causing the main problems of that website. So, it was, so basically what, what, we did, what we did on, on there was... was compress and resize those images. And I'm gonna be looking at how to do that and how you can do that quite quickly and easily um, with a free tool in a few moments. Just a, so, before, no, go yeah. just, just an actual pause. Can you just repeat the, the name of the, web, the, the free t tool you're using here? Uh, it's, Simon's just asked you to repeat that. Yeah, sure. It is, if I, I just bring up gtmetrics.com. Brilliant, okay. thank you. What we'll do is we put that in the comments on Facebook as well as we go through. Thank, thank uh, you, Jason. Sorry. No problem, no problem. So what we did, we just changed those images, and this was what the effect was of changing those images. So here's the before score, 18.7 seconds, 28.6 megabytes, page speed score, score of F. When we resized and compressed those images, the page speed score went up to B, 89%, and A is 90%, so it's pretty close to that. The, pay, the fully loaded time was 9.1 seconds and the total page size was 2.13 megabytes. So, you know, sig you know, significantly smaller payload there. When, so the all important contentful paint score, before it was 9.1 seconds, now you're seeing something useful after 2.9 seconds, which is of course well within that three to five second magic figure that we're looking for. Okay, so we, we, we've got the, the we're seeing something useful in 2.9 seconds. And all that was, was changing the size of two images, fixing two images on the wow. website, on that particular page. You'll notice oh, a few yeah, things are loading. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a few things are loading afterwards. But of course, this is the key one, the contentful paint. Once that's there, you can hang about and wait for perhaps the uh, contact us form at the bottom of the page to load. If that's if you're waiting a couple of seconds, someone's got something to read, something to look at. You know, if, if the little picture at the bottom of the page is taking a bit longer to load, it doesn't matter if the stuff at the top of the page is, is loading uh, above the fold, it's called, before you start scrolling. Something's there for someone to look at. So, a little, little game for Steve here. It's a spot the difference game. Have a look at these two images and um, can you see any differences between them? 
Gosh. I, I'd be honest, Jason, I, I can't see any image, maybe a slight resolution, but I can't see any physical differences on the image no. at all. No. In fact, you're right. There are no physical differences and it is all to do okay. with the size. So the image on the left uh, is 76 kilobytes, 76,000 bytes, and it will load on a web page in under one second. The image on the right is six megabytes in size and will take 5.5 seconds to load. Gosh. Approximately. That, that's, you know, it depends on your, your, your download speed. It will take significantly longer, for example, on a mobile. But the, the, the data size, so six megabytes, six million bytes, and 76 kilobytes, is only one side of the story. The, the, one, the image on the left, that is the size it is. That's the size it will appear on the screen. When that appears on the screen, the computer has to do nothing really in order to resize that image. It was 600 pixels wide. This one was 3000 pixels wide. So after it's loaded, the user's computer has to do some work to shrink that image down to fit it in as well. So not only are you waiting for it to load, you're waiting for it to render on the page. And if that's on a mobile, the mobile has to do even more work because it's got to shrink that image even smaller for the small screens. So work is being done in order to uh, get that image on the screen. The computer is having to work hard. And if someone's got a slower computer, it will take longer on their computer than someone with a fast computer. And you don't know. So to get that image to be optimal size is important to get out there. It will load quicker and it will render quicker on the user's screen. And you're not mess, it's not, the computer's not messing about resizing those images. Jason, you've got a question so, from Claire. She's asking the difference between resizing and sort of uh, resizing and compressing or, or crop it. She said cropping and compressing, but I think she means resizing at the same thing, isn't it? So can, is it better no. to resize or is it better to compress? Right. Well, I was, I'm just about to move on to compressing and resizing and actually cropping. Oh, well, there we go. Slightly, it's slightly. One step ahead. So one step ahead. That's great. So when you resize an image, you're changing the physical dimensions of it. As I said before, this one was nearly 3000 pixels wide. This one was 600. So I reduced that size from 3000 pixels wide and 3000 pixels is huge. I've got a lovely, you know, being a techie geek, I am a lovely, huge monitor here and on full resolution. It's, it's about 3000 pixels on full resolution. And that's a massive screen. It's far bigger than any website will ever be. In fact, if you were to print this image, you could almost get it on a billboard and it would, you know, a giant hippo on a billboard. It's, the resolution is that high, completely unnecessary for a web page. This one, it will appear that size, 600 uh, pixels wide. So you go into a smart package. And I'm going to show you a tool to do that, or a, a, a photo editing tool, and reduce the physical size. So you resize that image. Compression is slightly different. Compression is where you slightly change the quality of the image and remove things in that image you don't need. If you take an image on your mobile phone, for example, it stores data telling you where you took that picture, the GPS location. Uh, when you, when, when, um, you look at it in your photos, it says this was taken when I was on holiday in Wales, and you can see exactly the, the place that was taken. It will, it, will, images, it will have information about the size of the image, the colors in the image, the, what, what, what it was taken on. When you compress the image, you, you can remove that information. You can also remove certain things. So in certain, so this might have, ooh, you know, 3,000 know, 3, pixels wide, this will be 600. So you, so, but you can also make those pixels bigger. So there's less, less data on that image. If you keep doing it, you will reduce the quality. So it's, it's awful. And it's a case of optimizing it to make sure that you, know, you get the best balance between quality and size. And, I, and the tool I'm going to show you in a second uh, is will we'll show you how you can do that and decide on, 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 on your image, on, on the quality of your image. And the tool I like to use is, you know, if you're used to using photo, a photo editing tool that you like, um, all these tools will probably be in there. Um, a free tool um, to, to basically do the, to, to basically the, the resizing features uh, is, is a great little website that, that I like to use called Be Funky. Dot com and I'm just going to um, switch my share so you can see that screen there. Um, it's a new share. There we go. So you've got um, some more hippos, I'm afraid. Uh, on hippos. the screen. <laughs> and Looking forward to the day when we see your hippos on the billboards as we drive into Birmingham. <laughs> That's <Thank you>. right. <laughs> um, <coughs> Uh, some sleeping hippos there, uh, looking very content. Um, now, 
that image there, if I look at the actual size, there's the tools here um, on, on uh, Be Funky. All the ones with the style you have to pay for, there's a paid option. But the ones we need to resize, crop, and in a second, compress, um, are all built into the software for free. So there's the image. If I look at the size of that image, it is 4,000 pixels wide, bigger than my luxurious monitor here, bigger than most website screens, bigger than, bigger than most things you'd ever need. Um, that is, this image is seven megabytes in size. It's a huge image that will take a while to download. It would take you know, a couple of five to six seconds to load on, on a typical internet connection. So what we'd like, what we need to do is really reduce it to a size that's useful to us. Now, in this case, you know, you could, you, it, this is something you can play about with depending on the size you want to fit, fit on, on, your, on your screen. But um, generally speaking, uh, anything between 800 and 1,000 is probably big enough for any website. So I'm going to make this 800 wide. If you want to keep the proportions the same, so it all doesn't get all squished, it's important to lock the aspect ratio. That should be locked by default anyway. You tick that and it will shrink that image down. And that image on a website, it looks smaller on that uh, on there, but when you put that on a website, it, it, will, look, it will look fine. Cropping. I, I guess, Jason, most of us have got used to using our mobile phones that by mm. default are taking images in really high resolution and creating mm. very, very big files. Mm. And then my partner is forever frustrated with her mobile phone because it runs out of space on the memory. She keeps having to download the photos to, mm. to store. But we've just got used to these high resolution cameras, haven't we, that are taking yeah. images. That's and they huge. just take them. They just take them. That's right. And, and, and if you've got something, a client I was working with had, had a professional photographer come in with a real high-end camera and take some beautiful photographs of their business in action. They were fantastic. And they were great for brochures and print material. But when uploaded to the website, um, they were 13, 14 megabytes in size. And that's just that's taking a hell, of, a hell of a long time to learn. The other thing you can do to reduce the size if you wanted to is use the crop tool. And what crop does it just physically removes information you don't want on that screen and you can see it. So if say now I didn't want this edge here, there's a little edge, I can, I can change it and just perhaps move it down a little bit, get rid of that side and just have, it means that I've reduced, I've just got rid of information. Okay, and I can tick that and just get rid of information. You can't get the information back, it's gone, but I've shrunk that image down, I've made it slightly smaller. You know, it's, it's an, if, you, if there's stuff on the edges you don't need, you know, it's worth cropping it off. It just saves that a, a little bit of space. So I've resized that image now, and I've cropped that image now. Now I'm going to look at compressing it. If I click on the Save option here and choose Computer, I'm saving it to my computer, I get an option here to change the quality. If you remember, the original image was 7 megabytes in size. Already, it's 116 kilobytes. It's a lot smaller. I could reduce it further, get it right down. I can reduce it. But it says here that it's extreme low quality. It's three kilobytes. It will load in. You, know, you won't even see that loading. It will just instantly appear. But obviously, that image is no good. The quality is too bad. So you can play about with, um, play about with this tool and to get an image that you're happy with. It does warn you if it's a low quality image. So, you know, you could just err on the side of caution, just get it up a little bit, you know, Good quality image there. 82 kilobytes is very respectable for an image to be loaded on a web page. That will load very quickly in, in well under a second. So I'm going to stick to that. I've, so I've got the image reduced from eight, um, 82 kilobytes from, um, from 7.1 megabytes. So it's a huge reduction in size. And instead of taking six or seven seconds to load, that will load in under a second. Okay, so you just click save and save that to your computer and put it on your website and that image will be um, will load faster straight away. That, that's, it's, as, it's as straightforward as that. If you've got images on your website already, you can pull them, pull them off the website, put them into this tool and then put them back on again and the new image will um, load. And it's something, that's a service we offer as well. We'll go through someone's website and optimize all the images and do things to those images to make them load more quickly. Jason, I've got a question from Omar. Just while you've got that screen up, actually, it's probably appropriate. He's asking about the different image formats. Mm, that's right. JPEGs and things on there. And it, it, he asks, you know, what's the difference between formats and is one better for websites than another? So uh, a question for you there. Absolutely. So um, the uh, JPEG tends to be best for photos. Um, people use those for photographs on the page. PNGs are slightly larger in size. 
if I click it to PNG, it goes to half a megabyte, 633 kilobytes for the same quality image. Um, PNGs tend to be used for logos on a website. So a small logo. The advantage of a PNG is it can have a transparent background. So my HippoServe logo you see on my website can go on a can go anywhere and it's got a transparent background. So I don't have to change, keep changing the background color of that logo. That's the advantage of a PNG, but they're really designed for smaller images. All my cartoony images on my website are PNGs because they've got transparent backgrounds. They're small in size. They're, they're very simple. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Um, if you were to put all your photos in PNG, you'll end up with even bigger. You, you'd, you'd increase the, the size of your images uh, to get those there. So that, that's how you'd use it. There are new image formats as well, which we 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 will install this thing called WebP, which you can't actually. It's quite difficult to set up, but there's there's plugins you can use on different websites to get their even. They're very very small. They're even smaller than JPEGs. These small small images that load very quickly, but they're only compatible with certain websites. So you need to put in a few tools and plugins on your website to get them to work properly. Um, and we also use another format called SVG for our cartoon images, which makes them very clear around the edges um, and very easy to resize but again you're looking slightly more uh, advanced image and most websites you'll be looking at jpegs and pngs to work with uh, another another one quick question i don't know if we've got time to cover this today jason so it might be a conversation offline but are there similar tools uh, omar's asking for videos do we have the same problem with videos as we would with images I'm going to talk a little bit about videos later because videos are a completely okay, different fine. kettle of fish. But I'm going to talk literally in the very next section. We'll talk about uh, um, some. I'll go back to my other screen. Here we go. So it's all about limiting the lavishness of your website. I love that phrase. <laughs> limiting <laughs> lavishness. <laughs> oh, it's, it's full of alliteration today. Is my presentation. So, yeah, um, yeah. so the. Uh, First thing is don't go image crazy. We've talked about reducing those images, um, reducing the size, but also reduce the number. Unless, I mean, there are obviously situations where if you're, if you're a photographer and you want a portfolio of photographs, you do want a lot of images on certain pages, but lim li you know, limit them on your, your landing page. Your landing page loads nice and quickly and then have a gallery area where someone will know it's good. This gallery has got a lot of images. It's going to take longer to load, but I'm going there for that purpose. So, um, on your, your landing page, the page that someone goes to start with, limit those images, don't put them all over the place, um, keep them small. Um, the more images you have, the longer it will take to load. It's as simple as that. Uploading videos to websites, um, again, as you mentioned before, is, is a, something else altogether because not only are they uh, take a while to load, they also have to stream from your hosting, which could, you know, if, you are, if you've got a very busy website, could cost you bandwidth. If a lot of people are visiting that video um, and downloading it, that will slow down your website, visitors to your website. So a good way is to leverage YouTube and store your videos on YouTube and then embed those videos. Uh, and there are tools in YouTube to do that or there are plugins in certain types of website. If you've got a WordPress website, there are YouTube plugins. So YouTube is actually doing the work. Your website isn't loading that video, YouTube is. And YouTube, they, they've got but you, you might have one little server with your website on um, um, that's shared between a number of different people. YouTube have got farms and farms of servers designed for, just for this purpose to optimize videos. And of course, then the user can choose the quality of the video. They can, if they're on a mobile phone, they can drop it so they can have a lower quality video. Then YouTube will serve that. Or if you want an HD video, YouTube will sort that out for you. You haven't got to worry about compressing. The videos there are tools to compress your videos um, um things like you know if you filmed a high def definition video you know even something like um imovie on the mac or or some of the, the windows media uh things media programs can uh compress videos to a smaller format but then even then you're uploading a large file they're always larger and getting youtube or an equivalent to to look after your videos for you just saves you will save your website from creaking, uh, especially if it starts getting hit a lot. If you've got a website, especially if you're using a, a, um, a content um, managed website like WordPress or, or, or similar, um, it's, it's always, you know, you can think, oh, I'm gonna add some plugins to my website. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna make it do, do this wonderful feature at the bottom of the screen. It's gonna have a pop-up here and then it's gonna have these, these buttons that appear here and my Twitter feed here. And, and, and you suddenly you end up, in a lot, some are great. I mean, I, I 
I can talk about some plugins in a bit, but uh, there you can have too many. And a number of times I go in to optimize someone's website and they're duplicate plugins doing the same job. Um, or one's been used for a while, they decided they didn't like it, so they've installed another one. And it's a case of stopping the one you're not using and removing it as well. Even if it's being unused, it can still affect the speed of the website. It's also a security risk because it might not be being updated. Um, so it's removing bloat from your website. Things you don't need. Oh, do I really do I really need to have it so there's snow falling whenever the winter comes? Do I really need that plugin on my website? And if the answer is no, remove it. If you don't, re if it doesn't really help uh, sell your product or sell your business, just take it away. And I, I know I've been guilty of it myself, putting all these these plugins in and then thinking actually, I don't really need don't need uh, my hippos to bounce across the screen. They can sit still. To be fair. Um, Effects are another thing. Having you know, uh, some of these um, web builders, automatic web builders, you can have these zoom effects, things zooming in and out, um, all is uh, sliding in, sliding up, sliding down. Some are great, subtle things are great, but if you have too many, each, each time that is happening, the computer at the other end is having to do some work. And when it's doing some work and you don't know how fast that computer is that's doing that work. It might be a very old machine. It might be, you know, it might be a mobile phone. It might be a tablet. It might not have the power in which to do that properly. And so you end up with, you know, if you have too many of these things, you, you know, you, you might have been to websites where you try and scroll down. It's all jerky. And it might be because the computer, your computer, the computer itself can't handle all the animations and effects on there. And I did this thing. I had the thing on my screen in the background. I had all these sort of moving sort of pixels and it looked very technical in the blue background behind my website. And it's great. And I couldn't understand why the fan kept going on and my computer switching on. And basically, it was my computer was having to do so much work to generate these pixels that, that it was overheating and the fan was having to keep switching on it. So, yeah, if it was doing it on mine, it's going to be doing it on other people's and it might be slowing their website down. So I just got rid of it. Um, same with animations great. as well. Sorry? Yeah, no, it's, it's some great tips there. You just got me thinking about my the fan on my computer comes on so often, every so often, but I think it's because I'm on Zoom so much. Yeah, <laughs> it's Zoom, Zoom. To work really, really Zoom hard. Is bad. Yeah, Zoom is bad. Yeah. It, it, yeah, you can't really do a lot when Zoom's on. Um, the yeah. other thing is is being uh, frugal with your fonts. Um, each font, especially if you're using Google fonts, which are popular now and great, they're fantastic, they load quickly. But the more fonts you have, the whole font has to be loaded before. Uh, it appears it can appear on the screen so if you have one font that one font has to load if you have two there are two sets and that's every letter in that font every glyph in that font is having to load if you start to use bold a different type of that font bold bold version of that font or a, 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 um, a, a ultra bold version of that font suddenly that font set has to be loaded as well so all these are having to be loaded and you know to some websites the title is in one font the body text is in another the subtitles in another and even though you might only have a few letters the whole font is having to be loaded. So that's one thing that you be careful of with your fonts to make sure you're not loading too many. Um, okay, so that's removing things like the, all the extra features, all the, get, get just, just being efficient with your website delivery, only serving what you need. Right, caching. This is, this is um, considering caching. Caching is a way in which you can um, means this your server that your hosting website does less work and the page uh, gets loaded more quickly and in many ways you can in, in, if you're using some sort of uh, content systems such as WordPress which I, I keep mentioning WordPress because about 80% of our clients use WordPress so it's, a, it's, it's quite a popular one out there um, you could install some sorry Jason I often think of caching is like a pre-recording of your website is that a fair analogy that's right. I mean, basically what happens is, is before your website, your web page gets sent to the uh, user, it has to be built. So it will say, right, I'm going to add the logo here. I'm going to add these colors here. I'm going to add this font here. I'm going to add this picture here. And it builds it and then sends that page to the user. The problem is every time a user hit, gets your website, it has to rebuild that page and send it to them. What caching does is it, 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 once the page has been visited once, it keeps a copy of that page and sends the pre-built copy over to the user. So it's much faster. The server has to do much less work and it gets sent to the user. And then perhaps every hour it will check for changes or every couple of minutes it will check for changes and rebuild that page and send the new fresh version over. There are problems with caching. Sometimes if you make a change, it's not immediately visible and you have to wait. And there are, if you use a caching plugin, you have to empty the cache 
uh, to clear it because otherwise you end up with a stale version of your website but generally speaking over time a new version but you know the benefits do outweigh that and if you get used to using the caching um, you can uh, um, really improve the speed and one of the one of the score things on uh, a gt metrics tool I, I, saw, I showed you earlier looks at whether you're caching your pages or not before you know uh, and sees that as a, as a benefit in terms of your page score and there's some great plugins uh, one of the biggest ones um, out there is and quite complicated to use is w 3c total cache it's it's free um you can pay for a, a paid there's a paid version of it but it, it tends to be free to use and it can really speed up your website it's a bit sort of intimidating to start with um i on our shared websites we that i manage i use something called lightspeed cache because we have a specific lightspeed enabled servers so um the cache works with them it, it would work without the lightspeed cache it just it's optimized for that particular service that's the one we use that's free and i've also on, on my main site i i pay for one called wp rocket just because it's simpler to set up it just it just is easier to set up and use and i'm being very pleased with those results so there's a range and there's, there's many more different types of caching plugins you can use it is cat is the cache version of the website uh, jason is that held on you know if for example hippo server hopes to my site with hippo serve host the cache or is that hosted by by google no um it depends i mean um uh if you're using a caching plugin that that page is pre-built and stored on your your web server in a special folder uh in, in it's a cached version of the page which is sent out to you uh it can also be stored you can set it so it's again i said a copy is stored on the user's computer so they'll see it quicker the next time um if you can also use something called a cloud distribution network which is like a cache in the cloud and you can use these together with your cache plugin as well uh, a great one the one i like to use is cloudflare it, i used to use the free version of it there's, there's different paid options for extra features and what that does is it has lots of little lots of servers all around the world and a version of your website is is cached and stored across their network it's distributed across their cloud and that's great in many ways because if you're if someone say from another country looks at your website and you don't have a cloud distribution network it has to go to wherever your server is in the world to get that page with a cloud distribution network it will go to the nearest one available and of course distance um the closer you are to the server the faster the page will get to you it's just simple simple physics it will get there quicker uh, and so it was it's so no carry on you carry on we might answer the question <laughs> And so um, it's all they're spread on these little little servers all over the world. It's spread out over there. And the other beauty of a cloud distribution network, let's say something happens to your server, it just drops out temporarily. It happens from time to time. The, it will, the, the CDN network will serve up and, up and make it look like your page is still online whilst whilst the whatever happening at your end is rebooting. So it'll, it'll make it appear like it's always online, even if it, even if your server drops off temporarily. And they do from time to time if maintenance is happening, things like that. I've had a question from Omar, Jason. He's just saying, can you use more than one of these different plugins? Can you have you know accounts with different cache providers at the same time? If you have, a, let's say you've got a WordPress site and you have W3C total cache and then you decide, oh, I'm going to speed this up even more by adding Lightspeed cache uh, or, an, or, whatever, or another one that's there. Uh, it can cause all sorts of confusion. Um, it's best only to have one plugin at any given time because they, they, you know, it, it, one of the things they do, for example, is, is, is it's called minification and it, it shrinks down uh, the, the actual code, the, the, the HTML code and removes things from that code and that shrinks down. And then the other cache will come in and try to do the same thing. And suddenly you end up with all this confused you know, one cache might be fresher than the other and it all gets totally confused and you can run into real problems if you use more than one plugin. You can use the cloud distribution network with any of the plugins. A lot of them have actually things to, that they work with, specifically designed to work with the CDN. So you can use them together. Brilliant, that, that's great. Thank you for that. That's uh, hopefully that answers your question. Okay. The next next thing is once you're looking at your website is to harness the actual hosting package you've got. 
So when you start looking at hosting, avoid the starter plans. They tend to be geared towards the personal user, the person who's got a little blog, the person who, who's just got a one or two pages and isn't really expecting a lot of visitors. They just want some sort of presence. So avoid those start plans. They're not really geared towards the business website at all. Um, but, but you'll find that you'll outgrow them very quickly the minute you start getting a few hits over a period of time. And the cheapest packages aren't necessarily the best. Uh, look for, for what, uh, so the amount of memory that's on that package. Look for the type. I mean, uh, what, what we do on our site is we give examples of particular businesses that or these um, plans are suitable for. You think, actually, I fall into the category where I'm selling a product online. So if you've got a basic starter plan and a cheap package and you decide, I want to start selling a product, we just won't be able to deal with it because you get a lot more customers that way. And you want your shop to load quickly and, and look like it, uh, and, and those the, these, the images to appear quickly and the, uh, be able to move to your payment gateway quickly. You don't want any of these waiting. The minute you start waiting at the payment gateway, people thinking, oh, is my card going through? What's happening? I'm not sure if this is working properly. Um, so, you know, so you know, what we do is we sort of say, all right, okay, if you go to this package, this is suitable for shops, shop fronts, et cetera. Um, and we'll happily talk with people as well about uh, what the best hosting option is for them. Look for plans that can grow with you. You don't know, suddenly you might, you, you might, you might put an advertising campaign out or a special offer and suddenly your website will start getting hit. And suddenly uh, your, your once speedy website will slow down, start grinding to a halt. So it's important to look at plans that can, that can expand and grow. So suddenly, oh yes, I've got the, I've got the five month to nine month plan, uh, but I need to upgrade quickly. And ones that you can just in a couple of you know, uh, minutes upgrade those plans. And in most cases, we say with our plans, for example, if a user wants to upgrade, they can do it themselves or they can give us a call and we can upgrade it for them. If they move to a different type of server so they can move from a basic hosting to a more dedicated hosting, it might take a couple of hours to do that transfer, so a little bit longer. And it's, it's a case of anticipating. If you just put a big campaign out there, you might find that your website can't cope because it's being ready for that. And as your, as your company grows, as your business grows and you're getting more hits on your website, you need to be ready to increase the capacity of a website to cope with that. Otherwise you'll end up with downtime or the website will, will have an error 500 where it, it basically the server becomes unresponsive because it's getting too many hits. Um, and that's typical of a site that's just getting bombarded suddenly. Um, so the plans, business specific plans designed especially for businesses. We have a whole tier called Business Pro, which is designed especially for a growing business. Um, more so than the sh it's not shared hosting. It, it, it's, 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 it's faster, it's more, it has a few more redundancy features in for, for the business. And I think the other thing to look for is the support uh, that, that's available to you. Whether if that person is, if, if that company is going to phone and help you, if, if there is a problem, are they going to help you get online? So it's, it's just making sure when you look at your hosting, it's, it, it has everything you need because it's not easy to um, transfer from one hosting package to another. I think it's one of the hardest things you ever you have to do. You know, it, it's like in the old days when you had to try and transfer a mobile phone and you had to get a pack code and you had to phone one person and then you had to wait seven days for your number to transfer. It's still a bit like that. It's still quite hard work. Uh, so it it's getting it right. Changing my, uh, changing my utility bills, Jason. It's, it's that sort of process, isn't it? It's not yeah. necessarily straightforward. Yeah, it's not, that's not so easy. Your broadband provider, it's the same process, isn't it? You've got to wait for that code to be able to go mm. from one to another. Absolutely. So, I mean, the thing about hosting is good hosting is an investment. Uh, do research the package carefully. You wouldn't buy, you know, you wouldn't spend all this, you wouldn't buy a Porsche and put a one litre engine in it. Uh, your hosting is the engine for your website. If you've spent a lot of money on your website, you don't want to put it on a, a 199 a month server uh, hosting package because it just won't cut it. It won't do it work. So you've got to think carefully about it. it's part of the whole package of investment in your, in your digital presence is getting that hosting right. So, how can we help a hippo surf? Excuse me, someone just phoned me. Um, uh, I can't help you, I'm afraid. Um, it's how can we help a hippo surf? Uh, so, first up, we do the hosting. So, we offer some high quality, fast hosting, uh, consult with you about that hosting, and then offer um, free. Uh, a website transfer. So, we'll look at your website, and it's not you know, a free website transfer there. And then uh, lots of a wide range of hosting plans, and then there's, there's free email included, or if you if you're looking at sort of more robust, there's business email as well. In terms of the um, free web transfer, 
what we include with that is 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 we we will work with you on that. We'll we will we'll talk to you about what you want. We'll decide when the best time to transfer your website is. There's there's always a risk and there's a chance of there being a little bit of downtime as we wait for things to transfer. So we'll look to, when is your business least busy? You know, quite often it's in the evening. So we'll be working through the night or transferring your data across, getting your website working, getting that, uh, making sure that it's all there. But what we do beforehand, we'll always take a backup of your existing site. We'll get the new site working before we complete the transfer. So you can test it. You can look and decide exactly what you need. So it's, 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 it's um, we'll work with you. It, and it's difficult to say how long it takes um, for the full transfer to complete. Um, you won't necessarily, you won't be without a website because basically what it does is you transfer the data then switch from one to the other. But the whole process from start to finish can take a couple of hours. It can take a couple of days. Uh, no two transfers are the same. A lot of it, I mean, I'm waiting with one client at the moment. He's in the process of transferring and his existing host is refusing to release the domain name. So we're stuck in this limbo state. It's still pointing at his old site, even though his new one is up and running on our servers. And we're waiting and we're just trying to work out why they won't release that and then getting that transferred. So we work with different people um, and we work with the existing host. And also if you've got a third party designer, we'll work with them too. So that's with the hosting. We've also got our little web doctor um, who, who doesn't do COVID tests, unfortunately, because I think that would be, that'd be quite a popular thing at the moment. But yeah, uh, well, I think it did. It <laughs> well, so what we do is we, uh, the web doctor, um, we'll do a free site survey, look at your site, decide, you know, look at what can be improved. This is all about the image optimization. You might have a website with lots and lots of images already on there that are huge and you think, oh, I, I you know, going through all these and take our time we can do that for you we can look at them we can use a range of bulk tools to, to shrink those images speed that up we'll look at other things as well it won't just be the image optimization we'll look at all the other things that can help speed up your website and also we'll look at some fault finding too and the beauty of that is if you don't speed up your site um, or if we don't fix the fault then you won't get charged with that there and i think you'll be putting that link up in the uh um in the list of links as well there's a couple of links we'll there because sure it it's quite a long one is it's quite a long direct link is that uh, finally a lot of our customers i say 80 percent of them have a wordpress site and the thing about a wordpress site is that uh, if you don't keep it updated uh, and the plugs updated one there's a security risk and two you, you're missing out on speed upgrades and things like that and if you've got a couple of plugins uh, on your website Quite often there's an update a day or an update every every other day and going in and remember to do those updates can be a nuisance and so with our managed wordpress solution it looks like we have 24 7 updates so it's constantly looking at your site and then updates it if necessary before it does an update it takes a backup as well it backs up your site before because it's been known someone can send out a dodgy update um i uh, said so my my uh, my phone updated last night and I was, uh, I thought oh, I'm going to need that today. Is it going to work? Because I've had updates from from, uh, from Apple before when the phone has not worked properly since when that, when, it, when it, they happen. Um, and the same is true with with plugins and stuff. It can update and it can break and, and things can happen. There's um, doesn't always work. The plugins don't always work when they've been updated or they affect another plugin. So we take a backup before. So if there is a problem, we just roll it straight back. Um, there's weekly optimization of the WordPress site. Let's look at the database, trimming that up and stuff. A nightly offsite backup, so a backup every night as well of the whole website, not just before an update. So every night you get a backup and they're stored for uh, 21 days, 21 day backup. We'll install the caching and set that all up. We'll install Cloudflare, CDN, get that set up for you, install a security suite, and then a monthly health check of the website. So that's our managed WordPress solution. And the details about that are on, on our website too. And just just one last question i think that's come in i'm conscious of time jason it's brilliant i yeah. think you've gone through so much there everything from <laughs> limiting i love the limiting lavishness the image sizes and how we can optimize image sizing um you know sort of really harnessing the hosting has been great and consider caching and i think the last question is poignant actually from simon is just about the backups he talked a bit about backups and He's just saying, you know, how often should he back up? His, his website doesn't change very often. Is there sort of a, a recommended regularity, Jason, in terms of backups? Mm. How often should we all be backing up our websites? I mean, if, you, if, you if your website doesn't change, if you don't change your website, um, then 
you know, your data hasn't changed, but if something happened and it went down, or if an update happens, and let's say, you know, you've got an automatic update on your WordPress, or you do an update and it fails, and you haven't backed up your site, um, it's, it's, it can be a problem. It's like, a bit like insurance. It's only useful when you need it. Uh, and then, but that day you need a backup, you know, you're very, very grateful for that. Um, I would always recommend backing up nightly, once a night. We store all ours off-site. They're stored on Amazon servers. Uh, um, uh, so, so, you know, but I would always recommend backing up every night, especially if you've got a rolling updates on your on your website too. And if your if you, if your website is is using customer data, customer data, all our backups are encrypted. But also, if you're if if you're like storing orders on your website, um, you know, using it as an e-commerce site, it's even more important to keep those backups, keep that information there, because if, if someone has done an order, or created an order and that site fails, you'll have no record necessarily of that order taking place if, if there is a problem. So it's important, I'd say, at least uh, nightly, um, keeping that there. Brilliant, thank you, Jason. Um, so we've had some great questions come on and I really appreciate you know, the quality questions and the, the amount of information you've given us, Jason. You know, is this your most valuable asset? Well, absolutely, there's so much we can do to make sure it is. And um, I just wanna just finally just share, share your contact details, Jason. If anybody's got any questions, you've answered so much, but you've, uh, I'm sure created many more questions in people's minds about what they need to do, how they can uh, really make sure their website is their most valuable asset and your contact yeah. details are on the screen. So if anyone wants to have that initial conversation with Jason, I'm sure Jason, you'll, you'll you know, sort of pick up the phone, have a chat with anybody, mm -hmm. or not, respond to emails, your emails is on there, isn't it? And, uh, and have yeah. that chat and see how things can be taken forwards. I think the important thing though to point out is whilst speed is important, and Google does recognize it uh, on your website, um, it's still, Quality content is still the most important thing on a website. So it's making sure that, that it's good quality, regularly updated information on a website. Google will look at that first. Speed comes second in that. So it's important to get a balance of both, make sure that they've got good information, but that they can get that information quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jason. I'm conscious it's, it's four minutes. You've timed that so well. It's four minutes to, to one. Um, so, so thank you for, for joining us. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you know, want to find out more, please, please uh, do drop us your contact details, contact Jason or myself. Uh, I mentioned right at the very beginning, you know, we are here at Action Coach, we have a range of different services as well. So if you're interested in finding out how you can not only build your website to be the most valuable asset, but you can rebuild and continue to build your business to be your most valuable asset as well, you know, please do get in touch. We've got a great offer at the moment with our 30x um, video challenge uh, from Brad Sugars, our founder and author. He's written many books and created much, uh, a lot of content, so much content online. And we've brought that together in our 30x challenge. So it's 30 minutes a day, a video a day, working on how you can build your business. And we cover marketing. We don't cover a website specifically, but we do absolutely cover marketing and using um, videos. Is, uh, so using websites is a key part of that, you know, sort of testing and measuring, building your website. And we'd love you to take part in our 30x challenge. If you want to find out more about that, please, please do give us a shout or contact me on the email address below or visit our website and we can tell you more about the. Uh, the 30x challenge but for now with only a couple of minutes to go jason again thank you so much for your time this lunchtime um, okay. if you're listening to us on facebook please continue to put your comments any feedback any questions uh, if you're listening to us on youtube again put your questions on youtube and we'll certainly get back to you um, as soon as we can but thank you jason for your time this lunchtime uh, okay. to all our listeners thank you for joining us hope you enjoy your day uh, this thursday lunchtime stay well stay safe and we look forward to you catching up with us very, very soon. So for now, thank you all and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.